Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my pleasure to have you all here today. Basically, today I'm here to share some experience on temperature measurement, especially temperature mapping in uh, the storage area. Okay, I will go straight to the point. Okay. Basically, today we are talking about temperature mapping. And here, we, when, when we refer to temperature mapping, we refer to temperature and humidity mapping as well. This is especially for the storage area. The main topic today we will discuss on what is a temperature mapping study and why you need it, and which area need temperature mapping study. You'll be surprised that actually many areas you need all this temperature uh, mapping. The fourth uh, topic we'll talk about the process, how's the procedure of this temperature mapping. Uh, the fifth, we'll talk about other tests, uh, other than measuring temperature in your measuring uh, in your storage area. What other tests you can do by measuring all this data? The sixth, we will discuss what to do after the temperature mapping study. And number seven, we will talk about the devices needed for temperature mapping. Uh, at the same time, we will show some example of uh, the case that we have done and show you some picture. And other than that, we will show some other information on temperature measuring. And uh, the last, we will talk about other services available from TMS other than temperature mapping. First, what is a temperature mapping? I think this words everybody have heard uh, since a couple of years, four, five, six years ago. Uh, before that, nobody mentioned about all this. Temperature mapping is actually the study to verify that the entire enclosure area are maintained at a temperature within the permitted level. As an example, a cold room for storing medicine should maintain a temperature level between two to eight degrees C throughout the entire area of the cold room, especially on the rack where medicines are stored. A temperature study involves collections of temperature around the length and the breadth of the cold room or any other facility for couples of days and analyzing the data to check whether the temperature or the humidity within the limit at all the time. Why do you need, why do you need temperature mapping? The purpose of temperature mapping is to identify hot spot, to know how the internal temperature is affected by climate change or operation and to better manage the store of your product. Corrective action should be taken to resolve this issue. If corrective actions are not effective, this area will have to be isolated and should not be used for storing the sensitive product. The MHRA recommend temperature mapping is to be conducted once in the summer or once in the winter. In our case, it's maybe raining season or you have any changes in your uh, storing area. Uh, MHRA may be uh, not familiar to some of the participants here. MHRA is actually the Medicine and Healthcare Product Regulatory Agency from UK. Initially, temperature mapping is required by only the pharmaceutical and healthcare industry. But this study is later required by the food industry, electronic industry, expensive consumer product, temperature and humidity sensitive document or item in a museum or the lab. Which area need temperature mapping or humidity mapping? You can see from all these examples here, the logistic warehouse, the cold chain warehouse, or sometimes we call it a cold room, the hospital, in the pharmacies, in the ICU, in the operating theater, in the blood bank. At the same time, the distribution um, van or truck or aeroplane, 
whatever that you use to transport all these temperature sensitive products. Is refrigerator, the freezer in your lab or in the storage warehouse. The museum where you store all this important uh, item. In the exhibition hall where you exhibit temperature and humidity sensitive product. In your forensic lab or any other lab where you have important sample or very expensive equipment like an X-ray machine, like a um, microscope, and as well as electronic production floor. From this example here, you will see some of the very common uh, area you can see. The cold storage. If you visit a supermarket uh, frequent enough, you will see every cold storage that will be have a temperature display and a small chart next to it. And all the staff will come and read the temperature and write down every three hours or four hours. But if you notice, uh, maybe next time when you visit, you try to notice where they place the temperature sensor. In the picture, you can see also in pharmacies, lab. Which other area need temperature mapping other than the storage area? If you are from some of this um, industry, heat, where, you, where the heat treatment facility is required. You have an oven, especially the conveyor oven in the bread industry, in the glove industry, or maybe in the sanitary wear industry. You can look at this picture here, the sanitary wear industry. If you have furnaces, or a steam fertilizer in a hospital, or autoclave, sometimes we call it autoclave, the retort, a big retort in a food industry or pharmaceutical industry. All these places will need as well as, as uh, will need the temperature mapping as well. The question now is, uh, how is the process of the temperature mapping? Temperature mapping actually is performed by placing data logger throughout a specific area for at least three to seven days to study how temperature and humidity is distributed. This data allow company to identify inconsistency and implement changes within the environment. Corrective action will be required to resolve this. If corrective action are not effective, this area will have to be isolated and should not be used for storing the sensitive product. The question will always ask how many loggers, where should I put? Okay, the location and numbers of loggers mainly depend on the number of rack and what's the height or width of the rack, the number of location of the door, the ventilation in the warehouse, the movement of operator or forklift, the location of co-air supply and the dehumidifier if you have one unit in, you have, you have some dehumidifier in your area. However, general one data logger should be used for every five cubic meter. In any case, all rack should have the data logger. For a cold room, a data the data is typically collected for at least three to four days. A seven days is recommended, including the off day. The basic principle is to collect the data at different operating condition. Maybe it's a raining season or hot season. In, in European country, maybe during the winter or summer. Or when you're replacing a cooling unit or a drying unit, Data collection is usually at the operating condition of the cold room or warehouse, usually is at 60% or more load. This is some recommendation by the pharma copia or actually for pharmaceutical industry. The duration of study should be based on the frequency of product movement, the equipment cycle, especially for defrost cycle, 
When we talk about defrost cycle, uh, some of you may be understand during the defrost cycle, temperature change. And how long is this temperature going to be recovered? It depends on how good or how big or how efficient is your cooling system. At the same time, the duration also depends on the operation schedule, the business activity, the potential ambient condition, and their potential to impact storage condition. If your warehouse is facing the sun and the, the wall is not a very good isolation, it will also affect the temperature inside your room. So recommendation for warehouse is seven to 14 days. For a walk-in cold room or freezer, which is smaller in size compared to the warehouse, three to seven days is recommended. For equipment, uh, example, refrigerator or freezer, one to four days is recommended. Other uh, variable that are uh, affecting how many numbers or what data you should take depend also on the volume or load mass, the temperature you set and out at, uh, external temperature as well, the height of the uh, warehouse, exterior wall, the construction material, how many doors and windows, what type of lighting are you using? Are you using a uh, heat emitting lighting? And what is the gradient? What's the HBAC or the, the co-air supply and return van? Is they have a van? Do you have a, a air circulation or fan inside your warehouse? And where do you place your control sensor? What are the energy source, the cooling for the cooling system? How you arrange uh, the shell and the rack and how what's the number? What is the traffic pattern? Human movement, uh, forklift movement. Okay, this is actually the human factor. The loading and unloading pattern. That is why you recommended 60% or your usual loading condition. After the test, a report must be issued. This report will include, not limited to, eh, the protocol that we follow. For example, we are using the WHO technical report series, uh, so, so, and so, okay? So that you can have a reference. The drawing and description for the location of the logger, the date and time of the hotspot and the cold spot happening, the calibration certificate for the loggers, as well as the recorded raw data. We will uh, 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 give detail why a raw data you need as well. This is some example of a location of a data logger in a pallet racking storage area. You can see that all loggers are named and if possible, you have a description where you place the logger. This is another typical uh, example for the logger, the location of logger in the walk-in call room. This is a picture or the pictures of how the sensors are placed inside a storage warehouse. Example of this warehouse is they have a 30 meter by 30 meter uh, length and width and a 15 meter height. So you can see uh, numbers of racks inside. So where do we place this logger? Recommendation is if you look from the front, we recommend or uh, the protocol recommend um, one in the bottom, one in the middle, one at the top. Okay, you can see that one in the bottom, one in the middle, one at the top. And if you look from the top, you should have one in the front, one in the center, one at the back. So typically for this kind of warehouse, nine logger is required for a for a rack. So it depends, this is just a recommendation because for a warehouse, actually there's no hard rule yet, but for a pharmaceutical, uh, uh, pharmacopoeia or pharmaceutical company, 
this is a recommendation for them. Okay, this is how actually the, the logger was placed. You can see that this is our cold room. And this is actually the recommendation from the pharmaceutical industry. And depend on whether you are doing an OQ or you are doing a PQ, this is some of the recommendation you are, you are doing. Oh, sorry. For an, for an uh, OQ, usually you need a full mapping exercise um, unloaded, that means you have an empty space. And at the a, at a, a normal loading loaded uh, warehouse. And also during the power failure. This is to identify, you must identify the hot and cold spot. Of course, the report and recommendation is required. For in PQ, a full mapping exercise for every 12 months or during the seasonal um, change. At the same time, at the normal operation. Same thing, this is also, you need also to identify hot and cold spot. And also the uh, report and recommendations. What other tests uh, we do actually uh, when you're doing measurements, when you're doing a temperature record? First one is a power failure test. This is basically we want to know what is the recover time. For example, a cold room, you need to set two to eight degrees. During the power failure, the temperature will raise definitely. And when the power came back, we want to know how fast the temperature is recovered. That means how fast it can bring back down to eight degrees. Same thing, this is actually during the um, auto defrost uh, cycle. During the auto defrost for your cooling system, temperature will raise as well. So when the auto defrost finish, the refrigeration turn back on. And we, we want to know how fast the recover time. At, a, at the same time is when you replace a HVAC ventilation system or the cooling system, a mapping test is also required. This at the same time that you want to know uh, whether the specification of the cooling system is within your requirement. And you can check also whether the contractor doing their correct jobs. Okay, a special mapping testing also can be done during um, special season like heavy rain season. Tests can also be performed during empty and 100% load to analyze whether the temperature distribution is uniform in such a condition. What to do after the report? Suggestion and rectification. From this, from this uh, picture, you can see that this is a very good recommendation. And then you can see some area where the fault come from. The first one, you can see near the door. Why is this red area? Because it's near the door. And usually this place is, uh, the temperature here will be affected by the temperature outside. Every time the forklift come in or, or the operator come in, hot air will introduce into the cold air and this area will be usually hotter than the rest. What to do, we, may, we can recommend to change a roller shutter, roller door to a ro uh, rapid uh, roller door or maybe an automatic roller door where as you enter up to two minutes, the door will close. Same thing to this area here in near the window. If the window is not properly closed or not properly curtain, hot air will introduce as well. So you will see temperature raise in this area. How about this area? This is because of the HVAC, that means the cold room um, supply. Okay, if this is very far away from the cold room supply and this area will usually hotter. So we understand from our experience, most of the customer, the temperature sensor is placed very near or just next to the outlet um, of the cold air. 
So usually the control temperature is well within the limit. But when come to the places near the door, near the window, or near the place that usually the movement of the fog lift, the temperature is, is usually high. So these are the cases we will recommend the customer whether to change the roller door, uh, cover the window, oops, sorry, cover the window or changing the condition uh, of the ventilation or move the, move the place of the sensor. The next one we discuss about the device needed for the temperature mapping. So the device actually here we require is actually a data logger. You can use a manual data logger or a wireless data logger. Of course, if you use a wireless logger, which utilizing the uh, radio wave frequency, make sure that it is approved by the local government, example, the MCMC. Software uh, which can generate data and report should be compliant to 21 CFR part 11 compliant, if possible. Okay, the differences of these loggers is, uh, everybody will ask, hey, what is a manual logger and what is an automatic logger? So from our side here, we have three series of logger here for the temperature mapping. First one is a manual logger. When you, when you say manual, that means this logger, you need to link to your PC and you program the logger using the PC and the software. At the same time, you also need to read out this logger using a PC and software. But of course, these loggers are low cost. Okay, you can also have another version of logger, which is actually now um, getting very popular, is the Bluetooth logger, where you can program and read up the logger using your phone. I assume here everyone will have a, a smartphone. <laughs> Okay, when you have a Bluetooth um, function. So you can program using your handphone, read up using the handphone, locate the logger using your handphone. <laughs> and after you have read, you can share this data using apps or email. And this uh, Bluetooth logger can also uh, generate PDF report uh, automatically. And this logger also will give you an alarm when the limit is exceeded. Next time we talk about uh, wireless logger. Wireless logger here, usually we're referring to uh, logger utilizing uh, radio frequency. That means you can place a logger and, and this logger you need a internet uh, connection. Okay, the logger will record data and then transmit into the base station, which is connected to your PC. You, uh, it, normally in a big warehouse, the PC are all uh, linked. So with this facility, this data will automatically send to your PC and store the data in your PC or in the base station. And this software, this software here can help you to generate report according to your setting. You can set every uh, 24 hours or seven days or every month, this report and the recorded data will send automatically to the email that you set. You can send to 10, 20, anybody who interested on this, um, on this um, what they call data. At the same time, he will also send automatically alarm. If your limit exceeded, or the reading is stopped. Okay, this one will uh, help you to what they call um, uh, make action fast enough because some third party um, warehouse they, are, they they keep a very important or expensive product for their customers. If the temperatures uh, go outside the limit for too long, the product may damage. So this one, they can cut down a lot of their losses. Otherwise, they'll pay a lot of compensation. Okay, 
So this radio frequency logger here that can do all this emailing, automatic alarm. And of course, since they are utilizing radio frequency, they need the MCMC approved. MCMC is a, is a body that approves our, all our handphone and all our uh, 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 communication, the like walkie-talkie um, in, in our country. These are some of the loggers that they use for higher temperatures and for specific um, application. Okay, the, the, the standard steel loggers are all using for high temperatures. And this one is for special packaging, very small. This is a mini one. And all these are, this is for the steam sterilizer in the hospital for Bowie and Dick test. Okay, these are some of the cases, um, some pictures of the uh, our customers' places. The first one here, you can see a lot of shoe box. You're right. This is actually a warehouse storing expensive shoe. Shoe. <laughs> Why you need to measure temperature and humidity? Our customer have the issue of when the temperature and humidity are too high in certain area, the shoe tend to spoil. That means the glue tend to wear off or not working. Okay, the next one is actually the measuring, uh, manufacturing facility for medical devices. They're producing all these um, Packing uh, materials for your tablet, for your capsules. Uh, here, we are not going to mention who are the customer's name, but just for, for your references. Okay. Next one, we have some information here uh, talking about uh, MKT. I think this word is very familiar and some of the customer always asking because they are customers in the overseas. They always ask, do you measure MKT in your warehouse? Then they will start asking, mean kinetic value. Here is very confusing. Uh, when we talk about mean, usually we talk about mathematical mean. We take five reading, we sum it up, we divide by five and that is a mean value. In actual fact, uh, uh, the mean kinetic value here in the pharmaceutical industry is actually not uh, exactly the mathematical mean value. There are some others uh, function they need to consideration, but for simple um, or simple what I call uh, expression of overall effect of the temperature fluctuation in the in the storage warehouse, usually we 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 take it as a mean value. Mean value usually used by pharmaceutical industry. But one thing you have to be careful. When carry out temperature mapping study and qualification for pharmaceutical warehouse, cold room, van, et cetera, we notice a differing opinion on acceptance criteria. There are a lot of customers who accept MKT as acceptance criteria. This means that even if the temperature goes below or above the permitted level, field time, a cold room is still acceptable if the MKT is within the limit. However, if the medicine is kept at a point which frequently goes below two degrees C or above eight degrees C, the MKT may be still within the limit. However, the medicine kept at a point will lose its property. Hence, in our opinions, both MKT and the individual readings are important at the qualification. Huh? Also depend on type of medicine or vaccine store in this place. For example, if you have a product store in a cold room, two to eight degree. If this facility is uh, uh, sometime above eight degree, sometime below two, the, uh, below two degree. But if you take the MKT, the MKT is still within the limit. It actually doesn't mean that the product are still good. So you have to know how long and how many points uh, actually exceeded the limit. So this is very, very important. Okay, other than the mapping uh, services, 
what other things that TMS will do? TMS actually will also do the F value or the PU value determination for food and beverage industry, as well as the pharmaceutical industry. The F value or PU, PU means a uh, uh, pasteurization unit. So it's actually how well your product is sterilized. We know majority of the food and beverage industry will be sterilized using temperature. So this F value and PU value will determine whether your product is properly uh, sterilized. The second, we also do validation of autoclave in lab. And the validation of steam sterilizer or the washer disinfector in hospital. Of course, if the customer decided to purchase the logger and software to monitor the temperature humidity by themselves for their to day um, operation, TMS will provide the installation training and after sales service. Okay, this is some of the example how we do uh, F value determination and heat distribution test for the dairy product and for their retort. Retort means a big um, sterilizer that they sterilize all the products. Okay, we place a product in, in area, in the front, in the middle, in the back, or in the center of the racks, so everything. So after the measurement, usually we do two or three measurements um, to determine whether the product is properly sterilized. You will understand because in a big chamber and with so many um, products, not every product, in this case, the can, not every can will have the same temperature. So we have to determine where is the cold spot, where is the cold area. Okay, this is another few example here. One is actually the monitoring the refrigerator and the medical center at the pharmacy's area. You know, in the pharmacies, during the peak hours, usually the refrigerator, the door is actually keep open. <laughs> when, it, when the door of the refrigerator keep open, the temperature definitely will raise. So we need all this logger to maintain the condition and to change the operating um, practice. If every time during uh, the, uh, the peak hours, make sure that the door is properly closed. The next one is the a third party warehouse where they keep, this is very familiar, I think, the saline solution for the patient, okay? This saline solution is produced, then they, they keep in the big retort to sterilize. After they sterilize, then they were put into boxes and then they were stored in area uh, where suitable for this storing, okay? The, the customer who, who store this area, because sometimes they don't, they, their own warehouse is not enough, they will, uh, uh, what I call, they will utilize the services from the third party warehouse. Here you can see the logger in the in the, the direct. And this is the interface on the wall and the antenna. This antenna is actually to help you have a better signal where the, the logger re recorded the data will transmit into this interface while this what I call antenna. And this interface is linked to your PC and your PC you can set <coughs> sending report or email to the managers or to the operating uh, uh, supervisor uh, to receive all this data. Okay, uh, this is almost the end of the uh, talk to AD. And basically we also have another uh, talk here in June, uh, sorry, in July, but the date is not fixed yet. Uh, this talk, we are talking about the thermal validation for food industry only. Okay, now 